Hello everybody, this is on Our Western and this is the Our Western Rant series entitled What is the Word of God? Part 3. Um, the reason why I'm deciding to use this on feature on Facebook on um, the go live is that that way um, whoever saw watch me live y'all also have the opportunity to actually you know place comments and stuff like that while I'm doing this on particular rant series then I'll be able to directly um, answer any questions that you may have while um, while I'm doing this on rant and stuff you know what I'm saying so I think this is gonna be a pretty unique experience and stuff too stuff so um, with, without further ado um, this is the rant series part three of this is the rent series part three of the word of God. Now, last time in the series, uh, and I left off and I was telling y'all about the word of God. I was telling y'all telling y'all about the, the difference between light and darkness and stuff. And I was telling y'all that um uh, that the light rep represents a spiritual awakening, but the darkness represents spirit being spiritually asleep. And the last part I left off at was that I was on um, telling um everyone that the word of God was actually um, man that was made man made flesh and stuff, which is we know it's on Yahshua Jesus Christ and stuff. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm gonna go further into detail about explaining about um, the story about Jesus Christ, and I'm also explain why the word of God is also made flesh. First of all, stuff on the question that I want to ask today is that why is the word of God made into flesh? Um, my my own reasoning for the word of God being made to flesh is this: it's on um, first of all to give a uh, a natural story to a spiritual revelation. Uh, when when you read the the Bible, uh, many of us you know we read the Bible um, as face value and stuff. On um, we read it and um, and that's our particular interpretation is face value stuff. Others you know saying we read it because you, we 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 um hear other we we hear other people. Um, preachers and stuff like that, um, other preachers and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, thus um, giving their interpretation as well, then you go towards what they're saying and stuff as well and stuff, you know what I'm saying. So, um, oh yeah, I, I got you, Brandon, girl. You, you're saying I'm freezing up, so uh, it's kind of crazy. I'm in my apartment. But, but, um, but yeah, like, like I was saying and stuff is that, um, well, when you read when when you read the word of God and stuff on when you read it, it's actually the one uh, the actual Bible. What it is, it's actually an uh, actual story. You know what I'm saying? When you read the Bible, it's a story. Many people want uh, they they look at the Bible as biblical truth and stuff like that. Which if you want them type of people, it's nothing wrong with that. I'm not disagreeing on that. But me personally, uh, I read the Bible as face value as well and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I read the one on face. The Bible face face value as well, so but I also read it be, as a story value and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, so what I'm saying is that I also want uh, the Word of God, like I'm saying, it's actually to want uh, give a natural story behind a spiritual revelation. That also is to prove that a natural man could be a spiritual being, which is the light. And this is going to um, and this is going to go into the one um, process of um. This is going to go into the process of me explaining about the story about Jesus Christ and stuff. And what I'm going to major in today is that uh, I'm actually focusing on what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. But we, we're going to focus in those, on this um, awakening event with Jesus Christ and stuff. And this event is going to be, um, it, it's going to be uh, in Luke chapter 3, verse... I think 21, I think. No, 16, I'm sorry. It's going to start at verse 16, and we're going to end at verse 22 and stuff. And once again, I'm not looking at y'all comments and stuff as well. I, uh, and I know that uh, my screen kind of freezing up. It does the area that I'm at and stuff. It's kind of working itself out. It's the two. But I apologize about that. But uh, once again, it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, Luke chapter 3. Verse 16 through 22, and this is what, what it's going to read from the King James Version. It says this, John answered, saying unto them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mighty, mightier than I come it, the latch whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 
whose fan is in his hand, and he will duly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his gardener, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. And we're going to skip down to verse 21. It says, And now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying in the heavens were open. And the Holy Ghost descended in a body shaped like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Now, these are verse verse of scripture. Uh, to me, it's a representing or uh, awakening event that Jesus Christ has experienced. Now, remember in my last rants and stuff, I was um, telling you about the difference between the light and the darkness. I was saying that the light and the darkness is a it's a spiritually um it's a uh, spiritual awakening and stuff. Uh, then the darkness is mean that you're spiritually asleep. So now, the reason why the Most High God allowed Jesus Christ to come into flesh or Yahshua to come into flesh is that he wants to show us that we actually can uh, actually uh, also could acquire the same type of awakening or the light as well as us being men and stuff, you know what I'm saying, regardless of our flaws and stuff like that, we still can uh, have the light and stuff like that as well, you know, so this on um, this spiritual awakening event and uh it occurs in in every last one of the gospels it occurred in uh, john chapter 1 verse 29 through 34 it occurs in uh, matthew chapter 3 verse 1 through 17 and it also occurs in uh mark chapter 1 verse 18 through 12 and stuff you know what i'm saying and so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna break down these scriptures that i just read in luke chapter 3 break them down and let you know what it's talking about the first thing that I, that I want y'all to notice is this, is that um, in, verse, um, in verse 16, uh, one of the things that it's talking about is that it's talking about being baptized in water. When they, when, when they refer to being baptized in water, you have to understand the, uh, the symbolism behind that, the symbolic meaning about being baptized in water. Being baptized in water, it means, uh, it means this, it means to be immersed. And the word immerse means to either be dipped, submerged, to be absorbed in, or to even lose oneself. You know what I'm saying? To lose oneself. You know what I'm saying? So when you're when you're being baptized, that's what happened. You you're being dipped into water. You are being immersed into the water. You come out. Uh, the whole idea is for you come out to be a different person and stuff. You know, a different being or a different mindset and stuff like that. Now, there is a thing. Uh, where, where, where many church people, especially like Baptist people, people stuff, they, they use, um, matter of fact, John the Baptist said this too in the gospel. He said he was baptizing for the real missions of your sin and stuff. You know what I'm saying? When he's referring about the remissions of your sin, he's talking about, talking about forgiveness. He, he's talking about it's a forgiveness or a cancellation of debt. But you got to keep in mind that this um, forgiveness or cancellation of debt is only temporarily. So this baptizing water for remissions of sin is only a temporary effect versus what the person who's going to come, which is Yahshua, Jesus Christ is going to do. Jesus Christ, he's going to be the one. Um, he's going to be the one who's going to do something different than the water baptism and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Well, it won't just be a temporary effect, but it's going to be a, a, a eternal effect. And stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, um, just like I say, in the baptism, the water baptism is temporarily, it uh, is designed to temporarily, you know, um, forgive people for their transgressions. Um, it's it's a temporarily thing. Even you know, people they even talk about you know, um, by being a transgressor of the law and all the stuff. Their stuff. It's a temporarily effect and stuff. Now, it's so another thing that I want to re reveal to you is about the, the symbolism of water itself. Now, water itself uh, has different meanings. It means that it means that it's life. It means that it's emotion. It means that it's subconsciousness. It means that it's intuition. And it means it's purification. It means it's renewal. It means it's a blessing. It means it's fertilization. It means it's a uh, reflection. And also, last but not least, it means that it's a transformation and stuff as well and stuff. So, well, whenever, whenever you, um, especially when you're reading your um, Bible, stuff like that, anytime they use any type of symbolism dealing with water, just remember these um, things that I just mentioned to you about the symbolic meaning behind it and stuff so you can get a, get a better understanding of it. 
Now, another another part that that uh, I want to want to focus in on this uh, verse in this verse sixteen, uh, John he mentions that um that he said he shall baptize with you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So when he baptized you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, what does that mean? What does the, the symbolism of, of fire represents? Well, the symbolism of fire represents this. Uh, it represents energy. It represents an action. It represents authority. Um, it also represents passion. It represents being untamed. It represents power. It represents sexuality. It represents uh, consumption. And in most of all, it represents creativity as well and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, as we go even deeper into the scripture that I'm talking about and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Um, verse 17, um, we go to verse 17 of St. Luke chapter 3. That's where I'm at. So, it says this, and this sounds very important too. It says that, whose fan is in his hand, and he who truly purged his floor... Um, and will gather the wheat into his garner, into the shaft, he will burn with fire unquenchable. Now, what is this, what is this particular verse talking about? Like, a lot of, uh, a lot of scholars and stuff like that, they'll say that this verse is talking about when Jesus is going to come into the world, that, you know what I'm saying, he's going to separate, uh, you know, uh, the righteous from the unrighteous and, and stuff like that and stuff. My interpretation uh, of this uh, scripture is this, is that, this verse of scripture is actually talking about Jesus actually doing a work within himself before he gets to this point of being awakening and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And how do I know this? It's by me reading the scriptures and stuff. And the scriptures, everything in the scriptures by, you know, the, the English um, grammar language, everything in the scripture is referring to he, which is talking about Jesus and stuff, him personally and stuff. If it was talking about somebody else, then it will, then it will, um, it will go back and start, you know what I'm saying, make different, it will start using pronouns and stuff like that, talking about a different person or a person of interest and stuff. But in verse 17, that's what it's talking about and stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's talking about um, Jesus Christ himself, that he's going to go through the certain thing and stuff, which in verse 17, first of all, it says, um, whose fan is in his hand. Well, when you look at the one, um, when it's talking about a fan in his hand, it's, it's a representation of working on oneself. So so Jesus, he's going to begin, begin to have a work on himself and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Then later on in the scripture, it says he would duly purge his flow. The word purge means to be absolved or it means to be set free, to be clean, or to be purified and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Then also, his floor represents, it's a representation also of oneself as well and stuff too and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, this whole entire scripture is giving a, a, a unique reference stating that, stating that uh, Jesus Christ is actually, is actually going to be working on himself. He's going to go through a spiritual awakening with himself and stuff. Now, y'all probably ask it like, well, well how is this true? Well, well how is... Um, uh, you know, y'all sure Jesus Christ is going to be going through a spiritual awakening. How is he going to be awakening himself and stuff? How is he going to do that? Why do he need to do that? Now, how do I know for a fact that this is going to happen? Is because when you look into the gospel, especially after Luke, right immediately when uh, after when uh, Jesus received the Holy Spirit or his awakening, what happened after that? Immediately, what happened after that was that Jesus ended up being led. The scripture says that he been led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Now, this is very important. The reason why he was being tempted, uh, led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan is because of what I'm saying about the spiritual awakening. It's of, he had to go through a process of being purging himself. Now, keep in mind that even though um, Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying, he's the son of God and all this stuff, their stuff, keep in mind that he is also man as well. You know what I'm saying? He's a man as well. So he had to go through a process of purification to purify himself, to purge his fleshly self and stuff. And the whole purpose of him doing that is to show the ultimate example to us is that we all could receive what he received, which is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is always another interpretation of you being awakening. And you being awakening is another interpretation of you having the word of God within in you and stuff. So 
So um, I'm gonna go even more detail about this um this rent even more and stuff um. But until then and stuff, I appreciate everyone who's on um, viewing and watching my views um uh, place your comments and stuff like that. If you have any questions and stuff like that, feel free to always ask me as well. Uh, any uh, any other one comments stuff like that any um prayer requests anything like that hit me up always on Facebook until then uh, my brothers and sister continue to fight faith with faith God bless y'all.